Hey everybody, meteorologist Danielle Noyce here for the One Degree Outside Weather Network. This is your insights video, the deeper dive, and there's lots to get to, lots of active weather in the coming days. So let's dive right in. Light freezing rain during the day on Tuesday, not for everybody, and just a very small amount, traced to a few hundredths that we're going to break down in a second. Wednesday, warm rain for many of us and a gusty wind that will result in some localized flooding and damage as this whole system comes by. Good news for mountain areas is even though we get the rain and some melting that occurs with the surge of warmth coming in behind it, cold air returns and that means mountain snow will return as well as lake effect gets going behind this system as it comes on through. Precipitation totals over the last 24 hours focus from the Gulf Coast stretching back up into the Tennessee River Valley and some showers extending just off to our west too through the Great Lakes. A lot of this moisture going to be picked up and some of it working in our direction. And that's thanks to the jet stream. We've got a southern stream and then a trough that's digging into the Rockies. Both of these are going to kind of combine. Look what happens. We get a ripping jet stream. We are on the warmer side this time of the round. As this sweeps through during the day on Wednesday into Wednesday night, offshore by Thursday, we get some brief ridging that comes in or at least a weak ridge that builds in for the end of the week and the start of the weekend with a fairly quieter weather pattern, at least temporarily. So that's the upper level energy. At the surface, we've got an area of low pressure and a cold front that will be draped all the way back down to the Gulf Coast states during the day on Tuesday with some downpours, some thunderstorms, some isolated severe weather across the Carolinas, stretching back down into northern Florida. Now, we are kind of in between systems, but here's the thing. There's some low level moisture that's kind of stuck over us tomorrow, and that may mean some light showers from time to time or some light freezing drizzle that may come down that we'll take a closer look at a second. That front sweeps east during the day on Wednesday. So the eastern seaboard, a mess. Rain, some snow in the Great Lakes, gusty wind with this thing. So both in the air and on the ground, there are likely to be travel delays up and down the eastern seaboard during the day on Wednesday. Central part of the country much quieter with high pressure and control and another storm system is coming into the Pacific Northwest. Now, let's zoom things in. Predictive radar for our Tuesday. Notice there's not a ton of steady action, but what you will notice are there is these light shaded pink areas with some of this low level moisture trapped over us during the day on Tuesday. There may be just a little bit of light freezing drizzle or a light freezing rain shower that mixes in through the interior. Something that's happening tomorrow is we get a little bit of cold air that's trapped. That's happening because this area of low pressure goes by and the wind turns out of the north and northeast, dragging down a little colder air temporarily. So watch as I play things through. Yes, there's not much, but there's just a little bit of pink that hangs on. It may actually expand very briefly during the late afternoon and evening to include the 495 belt in southern New Hampshire before it lifts north, before we get that surge of warmth that comes in. That's going to be in areas of rain expanding across New England by our Tuesday evening and night, Wednesday rain, downpours, embedded thunder. While I'm not anticipating severe weather, there may be some rumbles out there that I don't want you to be caught off guard by tomorrow during the afternoon to early evening, especially. Around midday, there may be a brief, I don't even know if I'd call it low, but at least some lighter activity over southeastern Massachusetts before it ramps back up. Bottom line, it's wet, it's windy, it's raw. The warmth comes in, but you want the wet weather gear with you. During the evening, heavy rain sweeps through from west to east. On the back side of it, enough cold air comes in by Wednesday evening and night that we flip over to wet snow with elevation. Thursday is a much quieter day, although the lake effect bands get going again, and that will provide some moisture in the form of snow showers across northern and central Vermont and northern New Hampshire, perhaps extending into far northwestern Maine as well. So even though we get the melting and the rain that does come in, not good news for us snow enthusiasts and ski lovers across northern New England, we do get that colder air to come back. All right, predicted ice accumulation. Let's zoom in here. Yes, the pinks line up to a trace to a few hundredths. That's it, but think about it. That's all it takes to create some slick spots. What's happening here is it's called cold air damming, C-A-D. As the wind shifts around during the day tomorrow, we're gonna hover right around freezing through the interior. Any sort of precipitation that comes down may be just a trace of ice, but that may slick in the road. So even the northern Worcester Hills, perhaps even just a trace to the 495 belt very briefly tomorrow evening. Um, the Berkshire is stretching up into the elevations across Vermont and New Hampshire, too, when you get from Ossipee, north of Lakes Region to Conway, and then extending into northwestern uh, Maine, too. A little bit of light glaze possible during the day tomorrow. So if you are traveling, just keep a close eye on the car thermometer. 
until we get that warmer air to surge in, if it looks like it's right around 32 and there's a little precip, a little drizzle, it may create some slick travel during the day tomorrow. How much rain falls with this system as it comes on by? For most areas, it is a widespread one to three inches of rain. So that helps out in terms of the water table and the drought, right? There are some signs we may get some three to four inch amounts across portions of Western New England. It's an isolated kind of localized threat, but it is there. So this is a good soaking rain that comes through. Now, there may be some localized flooding that results because of that, although the ground is partially frozen in Southern New England and the farther north you go, it is with the snowpack in place too, but that will result in melting as well. All right, let's get to the wind because this is really interesting. During the day on Wednesday, notice not much wind, although the south coast, we start to see that southerly wind, which drags in the warmth, 30 to 40 mile per hour gusts on Cape Cod by late morning, midday. Then we're gusting 40 to 50 on the Cape by the afternoon. The rest of us gusting 20 to 30 miles per hour. We get this low level jet that comes in late in the day on Wednesday. Watch what happens, boom. During the Wednesday evening time frame, we get a brief period of gusts 50 to 60 miles per hour from the um, Worcester to Boston to Providence stretch down the Cape coast of Maine, gusting 40 to 50 as well. So the greatest chance of picking up pockets of damage or outages will come Wednesday evening. In fact, as that wind and that cold front sweeps through, we may gust, gust briefly 60 to 70 miles per hour on Cape Cod. Don't focus on the exact number, but that is where the threat is highest to see some brief gusts, isolated gusts that go 60 to 70. The rest of us through the interior, that front comes by, the wind shifts around. It's still active during the day on Thursday, but much lower gusting, 20 to 35 miles per hour. So the wind gust takeaways, the wind ramps up on Wednesday. It's out of the south. The strongest is Wednesday evening. I'd say like the 5 to 10 p.m. time frame, scatter damages and outages. You want to secure objects decorations. I have this vision of, you know, a lot of the holiday inflatables kind of blown around here. So those are the main takeaways to kind of prep here for those strong wind gusts, particularly in southeastern and eastern New England during the Wednesday evening time frame. So you want to do that ahead of time. All right, let's take you through some of the numbers. Tuesday highs, 30s to the north, 40s to 50 south, but it takes most of the day to get there. So as that cold air kind of hangs on, yeah, we may get some of those pockets of light freezing rain through the interior. And then the temperatures do rise overnight on Tuesday. After being in the 30s early, we rise through the 40s. Pockets of rain and downpours fill in. And then Wednesday, we jump into the 60s, a really warm day by December standards. We go 60 plus for a lot of the southern half of New England, even all the way up to the Canadian border. Yeah, areas of rain in the melting snowpack as we're 45 to 50 degrees. But the wind out of the south shifts around behind the front. We get cold air that comes back for Wednesday night. That promotes the upslope snow showers too with that wind out of the west, probably accumulating two to four inches with the high terrain in the Green Mountains and far northern New Hampshire. 20s to lower 30s and then Thursday highs, totally different. It'll be a noticeably cooler day after highs in the 60s on Wednesday. Thursday, we're only talking 30s to lower 40s, the wind still gusting occasionally 20 to 30 miles per hour. Thursday night gets cold, widespread teens to lower 20s, mainly clear skies. There'll be a few scattered clouds and maybe a few uh, lingering flurries or snow showers in the mountains. And then Friday, we're only in the 20s in northwestern New England and about 30 to 35 the south, farther south and east you go. Still a gusty breeze out there on Friday too, but a generally much quieter end to the week before we see an increased chance of some precip coming back for the second half of the weekend. So we'll keep you posted on that as always on social media, on our website, the number one degree outside.com. And of course on our free app, you can just search noises one degree outside weather on the app store and Google play. We'll see you with more weather later on.